Hey guys, Creepy Kentucky in here for another chapter of the 13 Horrors for Halloween. Um, the one I'm talking about this time around is probably the most special movie for me that we'll be discussing um, in, in this series of reviews because I just have really fond memories of this particular movie. Um, you know, it's one of those deals where I'm sure you guys remember like um, when you see a movie you really love, you remember the very first time you saw it. You remember where you were, um, you know, how freaked out you were, or whatever. And I remember I was actually at my aunt's house, um, about 30 miles from here, um, and she'd rented this movie, Lady in White. Here's the DVD cover. And, uh, I just really, the, the movie really struck a chord for me. It was one that I just, you know, I, I think it's more, it's more of a family movie um, than a straight up horror movie. I think it's rated PG-13, of course, so it's not hardcore horror, um, but it's one of those movies, and, and, and you guys can probably already tell, that I've just really, over the years, um, it's just got a special place in my creepy heart, if you will. Um, so I thought it would be a good time to review it. Uh, oddly enough, we have never ever mentioned this movie on the show as far as I can remember. I mean, maybe in passing or something like that. I ch uh, talked about the film. But, also, bringing in a new feature just to try things out. A second camera so you guys can get a view of the movie over there as well. So, Lady in White, there it is in that camera. And, um, you know, basically, the movie itself, um, set in the 1950s, uh, the first part of the film takes place on Halloween night, and, uh, I think it was late 50s, early 60s, something like that, I don't know, somebody will probably correct me <laughs> on here, um, and Frankie, which is played by a very young Lucas Haas, you can see him in the, on the, on the cover of the movie, is locked in uh, the cloakroom in, in his school overnight. And while he's there, he has some strange things happen. Um, he's half asleep. He notices uh, the sound of a little girl. And doesn't know what the hell's going on. I mean, at first, he's like, what the... F am I dreaming this, you know? Um... And eventually he just sees her. She's glowing in this bright light. It's obviously a ghost. And what happens is like a recreation of a murder that took place uh, in that cloakroom some 20 years earlier, I think. So uh, it's sort of like a, um, a ghost hell, a.k.a. and also it's sort of like a ghost hell and a murder mystery. Um, because there's all kinds of twists and turns along the way that that you'll definitely want to uh, stay tuned and watch the whole movie for the you know and I I never hear anybody reference this movie and this is like an awesome film especially if you have kids um, to watch on Halloween uh, on Halloween night I mean there's nothing really bad in this uh, not even I mean there's a couple of foul foul words here and there. But, I mean, compared to stuff that's out today, this is, I don't know. And I've seen the movie on uh, DVD a few times now. Went back and watched it a few times. It's perfect. It's a perfect setting for Halloween. It gets you in the mood. It's one of those movies that just makes you, at the end of it, it just, I don't know, it gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, you watched a really good movie. And it's a ghost movie. I mean, I don't, I don't like a whole lot of ghost films. But um, this one's really good. I mean, I, I, I don't know... Um, you know, as a kid, I was around the same age as Lucas Haas, um, and it really, you know, maybe for me it connected with me more then, um, what, seeing it then, you know, than it would, you know, somebody older seeing it now, because there's a lot of the effects in the movie and stuff haven't, haven't aged really well, and this was a, a lower budget film, which I don't think it did hardly anything. It was released theatrically. But I don't think it did much of anything in theaters, unfortunately. Um, and uh, got sort of a cult following um, you know, among the home video uh, 
rental places and stuff like that. So, um, but you know, a lot of things that really connect with me as a kid because in elementary school we also had a cloakroom. We called it a cloakroom. Another thing that sort of freaked me out a little bit. Um, and the ghost effects with the young girl um, is is really creepy. I mean, even to this day, the way she laughs and giggles and she sings this song um, from like the 1930s, um, something like, uh, did you ever see a dream walking or talking or something like that? It's just really, really creepy the way they, the way they um, cue that music in the movie as she's singing it and uh it's just it's got some really creepy moments and if you're you know i know there's a lot of people out there that have kids that want to find something cool to watch besides the worst witch i could talk about the worst witch on here but let's face it folks that that movie's not much uh, i tried watching that again last last year this one's definitely uh the better family film to watch so um but I mean, what else can I say? I mean, this this is a DVD that came out from MGM. Um, I think about four or five years ago. It does have special features on it. You may want to check them out. Uh, audio commentary, and the director of this, Frank Lalagia, actually did. He didn't really do anything else. I mean, uh, Fear No Evil from 1981. Uh, and a couple other TV projects, and I think that was it, unfortunately. But uh, Lady in White is a great little movie to watch. I mean, I can't really say enough good things about it. Uh, you have a lot of deleted scenes, behind-the-scenes footage. You know, there's a lot of extras on this. And this is a DVD that you can get really cheap as well. So I can't recommend this one enough, though. This is Lady in White, a great little ghost movie. If you haven't seen it, um, I ch I check it out. I love it. It's a great movie. So, there you go, Lady in White, I'm the Creepy Kentuckian, and I'll see you uh, in a couple of days for the next review on the 13 Horrors for Halloween.